so hey friends welcome back hope you all are doing well so today we are going to talk about how to take history and present a case of breast lump so before uh, taking the history of a breast lump there are some points and something you must be familiar about the breast anatomy and the pathological part the breast anatomy we uh, it's, uh, we usually learn about it's this uh, it mostly lies from the second to sixth rib and over the pectoralis major muscle with the fatty adipose tissue and the lobular most of most of the lobes uh, lobular and the lobes containing the stromal this is the stromal part this is the intra lobular stroma and the intra lobular stroma along with the these all lobules and which finally opens into the rectiferous duct and the sinuses over the nipple area then what are the diseases which are going to be we are going to learn and what from where they arises they are very very important in making your uh, differential diagnosis so uh, we must learn this how this uh, disease arises from different different parts so the very important point from where most of the diseases and what are most of our uh, points concerned are the terminal duct lobular unit tdlu this is the this is the mostly the terminal duct lobular unit from where the disease arises are the cyst sclerosing adenosis small duct papilloma hyperplasia atypical hyperplasia or carcinoma part the major of the disease arises from this terminal duct lobular unit then we have a lobular stroma which we have talked about this is the this is actually the intra lobular stroma intra lobular stroma is the surrounding uh, connective tissue around the terminal duct and the alveoli from where the disease arises the fibroadenosis and pilot tumor why this is making so much concern is because this intra lobular stroma is hormone responsive this is hormone responsive and the intra lobular stroma is not which contains mostly the adipose tissue from where the disease arises is the fat necrosis lipoma fibrous tumor fibromatosis sarcoma and from the large ducts and lactiferous sinuses the disease arises are the duct ectasia recurrent subcellular abscess solitary duct papilloma pages disease so these are the differential and the things we are going to learn and the things we must keep in mind so now starting uh, one more thing we have to learn is the nd classification this is the abrasion of normal development and involution of breast and this mostly covers all of the benign breast condition and this tells us about the different stages of the breast development and what are the disease which are going to arise during this developmental stages so in the early reproductive period the thing we are going to learn is that uh, we have just uh, talked about what are the and uh, what is the uh, pathological and the microscopic anatomy so actually in, uh, most of the uh, glands this uh, the two main important thing in the breast tissue is the gland and the stroma and the ratio of the gland is to stroma is 1 is to 1 during the early reproductive period so what happens next is that uh, during the maturation and the reproductive age or period the gland is to stroma ratio increases because the gland number of glands formation increase due to the estrogen and the progesterone and during involution part the stromal component the connective tissue and the fibrous tissue component increases so the gland is to stroma ratio decreases and which all causes these main problems which are which we have which are we are seeing in this table uh, so let's talk about this in brief what are the age related conditions between this 15 to 25 years of age the fibroadenoma which is the most common other being fibrocystic disease and the cyst in the breast 25 to 40 years of age the fibrocystic disease is the most common and other diseases like fibroadenoma cyst and pilos tumor and more than 40 years of age fibrocystic disease is a common and the ductasia as others so just quickly talk about what are the chief complaint with which our patient presented the patient present with uh, chief uh, chief complaints of main chief complaint was swelling or breast lump since 3 months this is a main chief complaint other complaints may be like pain nipple discharge or retraction we will just talk about in brief but our main concern will be about the swelling or the breast lump 
so what are the points we are going to ask about what are to our patients that about the breast lump so these are the points we are going to ask about to our patients what is the onset the onset is spontaneous or following any kind of trauma if it is following any kind of trauma there can be a fat necrosis which can also present as a hard lump and which is usually it is mostly spontaneous in progression of the rate of growth which our breast lump it was gradually increasing in the size since last 3 months and two things i have written here the first appear and first notice the swelling or the lump may be present from last many years or months but about the site size and shape is a small discrete lump in the outer right breast of size initially 3 into 4 cm which gradually increases in size to 7 into 5 cm this was just a uh, brief history and we will just talk about in few minutes later about the negative history just let's just talk about quickly about the pain part because it is something which is different from other pain the side and uh, the breast pain usually the uh, onset is accidentally felt or following trauma the character can be the heaviness or lumpiness in the breast with if there is throbbing pain then it can be acute mastitis duration we have to mention the duration here relation with menstrual cycle cyclical mastalgia and non cyclical mastalgia which helps us in making our differential diagnosis so in cyclical mastalgia if there is a pain with lump then it can be a fibrodenosis and in non cyclical mastalgia it can be a treat syndrome and mandos disease a very good line written in the das is all neoplasm of the breast either benign or malignant including the carcinoma are painless to start with so this is the thing you have to remember so starting now next coming towards the negative history part i have just mentioned this whole this format how you are going to present our history and these are the things we are going to ask about to our patients to complete our negative history part so just we have to rule out the other diseases which we have already thought in our differential diagnosis there is no patient did not complain of pain there is no relation of pain regarding the menstrual cycle there is no blood or pollen discharge through the nipple there is no fever no pus no uh, no pus discharge or pain no ulceration over the swelling or recent changes in the nipples no history of weight loss so that uh, recent weight loss swelling in the axilla or neck no history of pain or shoulder in the back or abdominal lump for rule out the secondaries there is no history of swelling in the opposite breast no history of trauma no history of fever no history of breast malignancy in his in her mother or sister taking no history of taking actually you can this uh, just just skip this part and you can ask it in the personal history like menstrual uh, menstrual history obstetric history and also in the family history part so family history is very very important we have to ask about Uh, the patient's mother or a grandmother history about breast carcinoma or any other carcinoma which can cause this breast carcinoma and regarding the person history we have to ask about the marital history of the patient marital status of the patient the details of menstrual cycle and the very important part here becomes the age of the menarche at which the first menstrual starts and the details of obstetrical history like the age at the first pregnancy number of child which we have to mention about the gravida parity live and abortion the what are the mode of delivery last last child birth and the history of ocps or any kind of hormone replacement replacement therapies or also we have to mention about the lactation of history whether whether the child was breastfed or not so this was in brief about the what are the points we are going to ask about our patients in the history taking thank you so much so we will be talking about the next cases thyroid next swelling or thyroid thank you so much.